some teachers don't understand that people are dyslexic. They just see them as people who mess around, but they don't understand why, because they struggle with learning. I get really distracted because other things can be much more interesting sometimes. It was hard for me to focus and concentrate in class. I don't get enough time. Like when all my friends are done, I'm still trying to work it out. My spelling makes people laugh. It makes me laugh, actually. My spelling's still not great. I'm trying to work on that at the moment. And my reading, if I'm sight reading, oh, it's, it's a complete joke. I hated reading, I hated writing, like spelling in public, re reading out loud. They might not be good at English and spelling, but they would be like really good at other things. Many dyslexics, their difficulties manifest itself in challenges with reading. And what that really comes down to is a difficulty holding on to and manipulating individual sounds. Initially, the weaknesses are around the development of phonic knowledge in relation to reading. So the student has a problem with mastering the relationship between sounds and symbols, word building, and word analysis. They're going to need a system in place that is phonics-based, systematic, and direct to help with reading. A system or a curriculum that focuses on whole language and memorization is just going to blow up in your face with a dyslexic student. When we begin phonics, we begin by learning simple sounds, like A says A. Ah. But then when we're looking at a more complex word, two letters can be grouped together to make a unit of sound, like S-H makes sh at the beginning of a word. And it's learning those components, those um, simple phonemes that helps the dyslexic to understand how you can then look at a word, break it down into the units and build it. We want to engage all the different senses or the way in which the brain learns and processes information. So for example, we don't want to just tell them A says A, ah. we want them to find a movement around that. So we might have them actually write out an A in the air as they're saying A, ah. or they'll have them spell out the different sounds with their fingers. And we also want to give them a visual cue or a visual way of thinking about it. So as we say A says A, ah, we might also have them think about an apple. Right, so they have this, maybe a physical image of an apple in front of them, but they also have this mental imagery of what an apple is. And we might even have them think about the way they're making that sound with their mouth. All these different ways to give the brain a shortcut to make that, that connection more instantaneous and more efficient. Spelling is another challenge for dyslexic students. They, again, are trying to rely on their memory and it's just not going to work. And so a phonics-based system will really give them rules, tips, and tricks to help them so they don't have to rely on just memorizing. In a typical phonics lesson, we're coming up with um, silly mnemonics or sayings and phrases to remember the spellings of words. We talk about the word could, C-O-U-L-D. And we would say, could old umbrellas leak drops? We're getting up and using movement and dances and song uh, to remember different spelling rules. Um, so it's very important that you're engaging your students in a multi-sensory approach so that they have as many avenues as possible. Because dyslexic students have a difficult time reading, they don't read as often as we would like, and therefore they don't get a lot of practice to understand how grammar and punctuation are used in context. Punctuation and grammar is difficult for um, a, someone who's dyslexic because there's so much to remember, there's so much to process. You're processing the letters on the page, you're making them into words, you're checking your understanding, you're checking where the words even are on the page, and then at some point you've got to apply this punctuation to it as well. You need to allow your students to use tools to help support those deficits. So allow your students to use a program with spell check or use a program like Grammarly that will catch those errors for them. When you process information differently, it shows up in a variety of forms, including math. Sometimes it can be something simple, like a visual thing. They might interpret a certain digit as a different digit and or see it as one way and write it as another. And quite often, uh, children would have trouble interpreting kind of what we would call wordy problems. 
a dyslexic child might have trouble uh, interpreting what to do, what information they need to take from the question. While they might understand the concept and get the big picture of what they're trying to accomplish, following multiple detailed steps can be very difficult for them. We see the biggest struggle with math because it is sequential and because typically we think that math has to be done one way and one way only and there's one solution and that does not work for our dyslexic students they want to ask why they want to come up with different solutions math facts can also be a challenge for many dyslexic learners multiplication tables times tables what we like to call the kill and drill system of just rote memorization is not how a dyslexic mind works maths is all about problem solving dyslexics are amazing problem solvers so if you remove some of those barriers by giving them the times table square, you'll get an amazing mathematician. If they need to bring out a calculator to do seven times six, that's okay. We want them to be able to apply that information to the higher level concepts. Many dyslexic learners have a difficult time with organization and concentration. And when it comes to organization, many dyslexics have a difficult time because of working memory, which is the ability to take information, hold on to it, manipulate, and do something with it. You need to chunk things into groups of four and no more. You might use a mind map if they're a very visual child. If they're someone who likes symbolic presentations, then that can be a useful way of organizing information. Many dyslexics might struggle with verbal memory. So if we give them instructions and we only say them out loud and we expect them to hold on to all of that information, many dyslexics might have a difficult time with that. Um, many dyslexics might have a difficult time with their locker combination, that sequential memory, that ability to instantly remember to go three to the left, four to the right. A dyslexic student can be very unorganized. They may need more structure and support than you might think. Your classroom really needs to have systematic organization systems Everything has a place. My students know what to expect on a daily basis. They know the routine, they know the materials they need. You can color code a visual map of the school so that the English block's green and the math block's red. And if your English book's green, you know you need your green book for the green block. So many of our students have difficulty with concentration and I know every teacher knows the student that is somewhat peering off or um, becomes occupied with something in their desk. If you struggle to concentrate because the teacher has talked for so long and your working memory is overloaded and your processing is gone and you struggle to process things in an auditory way anyway, of course you're gonna stop listening. A student really should not be sitting for more than 15 to 20 minutes at a time or actively listening. After that, it just becomes jumbled noise. We incorporate movement in our day so that they're able to get a little bit of energy out. Um, we use um, things like rocking chairs or movement stools, um, even fidgets if that's a way to keep their mind um, busy but also focused on the learning that's taking place in the classroom. So if you have a difficult time organizing your ideas, if you have a difficult time organizing and following through on sequential tasks, it can have a huge impact on standardized and normed assessments. Unless you're giving something completely unseen and you're asking someone to apply what they know, you're always measuring someone's memory. With processing, as soon as you add pressure, you find it harder to <laughs> reproduce the information. Time is also a very important part of making sure a dyslexic learner is able to express what they know. Whereas a student, a traditional student, might only need 30 minutes to complete an exam, a dyslexic learner might need an hour, and even an hour and a half, to show what they know in that kind of format. What are you trying to test for? What do you want to know that they know? If it's a spelling test, yes, focus on spelling. If it's a grammar test, yes, focus on grammar. If it's a punctuation test, absolutely, mark off if it's not correct. But if it's none of those things, those things should be either put to the side or given a separate grade because really what you're focusing on is the content. Dyslexic learners, incredibly bright, incredibly capable people. And our classrooms need to be engineered in such a way that we bring that out and that we support that. A phonics, multi-sensory approach hurts no one, helps everyone, and can be transformative for a dyslexic learner. I wish teachers were aware of the, the yin and the yang with dyslexia. 
because there are some challenges, the written word, spelling, things like that are, are difficult or more difficult for dyslexics. But the imagination, the storytelling, the communication, the empathy, all these positives are sometimes sort of neglected in, within the school system.